Hi, I think there's nothing quite like using a really sharp, well set plane. It really is one of the, the best things in woodwork, I believe. Uh, however, a lot of people have a trouble finding that, sort of getting the plane set to that sort of sweet spot, spot where it's really sort of singing along. Um, so I thought I'd uh, just do a little, little uh, video uh, about how to, how to um, get your plane adjusted to its absolute optimum. Uh, I'll start off by um, talking about uh, reassembling a plane, you know, after you've sharpened it, how to, how to get it back together again and, and, and get the parts together. And then we'll look at actually um, the actual fine adjustment to get those beautiful shavings. Here's um, a plane disassembled as if I've just, uh, just sharpened the blade. Um, and we'll see about how we go about putting it back together again. Um, so um, I've got the cap iron here and the blade. Uh, the cap iron's still got the screw in for attaching it to the, uh, the blade. When you disassemble the cap iron and the blade, you, sh you don't actually necessarily need to unscrew the screw completely. If you just give it a few uh, sort of a turn and a half or so, then you should be able to take the blade out without having to sort of lose the screw. Anyway, to reassemble it, you want to try and avoid having the cap iron rubbing across the nice new sharp edge you've created. So um, what you do is you drop, drop the um, blade on like that. So we've got the, the bevel uppermost that we've just sharpened. Drop the blade on like that, slide it forward and then turn it. So now we've, um, we've got the cap iron sort of sitting back from the edge of the blade, end of the blade. Now we can move the cap iron down. We're aiming to get it about a millimetre or perhaps just a little bit less than a millimetre from the end of the blade. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Um, and then we tighten up the, the screw at the back there. Now I have to admit that I'm quite often I'm a bit naughty about this and I actually use the lever cap to tighten up. Really, you should be using a screwdriver. But um, in fact, Lai Nielsen make some fancy screwdrivers just for that job, which I think are a waste of money. Um, so, we've got the uh, cap iron on the flat side of the blade and the sharpened bevel on the other side. And then we drop that into the plane body, trying to avoid banging the, uh, you know, the sharp end against any metal. We, we, we're always trying to get it in in there without blunting it in any way. Um, and drop, drop it in like that and then we're ready to put the lever cap on. But you can find that when you try to put the lever cap on you can't get it on, you can't get the lever down. And that's usually because we've got a little gap just there. Um, the, the blade hasn't sat fully down onto the frog. The frog's the, the flat bit underneath. And that's because it's not engaged fully with the adjustment mechanism. It, it's sort of sitting on top of one of these pieces here. Um, so you end up with a little gap there. Um, and then, so if you sort of wobble it around a bit, you, there we are. Did you hear it drop down then? You can usually hear it sit down fully onto the, onto the flat of the frog. And then you take the, the lever cap and drop it on like that and press the lever down and the lever should go down without a huge amount of pressure because if you have to really force it down then there's too much tension placed on the blade assembly and it makes it very difficult to adjust because it's really clamped in onto the, uh, the flat of the frog. So you want it to be tight enough so that the the blade doesn't sort of move around when you don't want it to, but not so tight that you can't move it. And you achieve that by adjusting this screw here. But once you've got that set, then you shouldn't need to go near that screw again, you know, because you just take the thing off like that and drop it back on again. So you shouldn't need to be fiddling with that screw very much. If we turn it over now, um, you're looking when blade's gone in, you're looking for the blade to be, that's probably about right, I don't know if you can see that, it's probably again about a millimetre or less, just a little bit less than a millimetre of clearance there. 
Uh, you don't want a huge gap, but you don't want it so small that the shavings can't get through. And you can adjust that, that gap by, well, you'd have to take the blade out again, <laughs> if you did want to adjust it, unfortunately, unless you've got a fancy bedrock plane. On these sort of standard Bailey planes, then you've got a couple of screws here, which you can slacken off. And then there's another screw in there below the, you know, at the bottom of the frog at the back there. And you can turn that to move the frog backwards and forwards. And before you tighten up, just feel to make sure the frog is sitting in sort of square with the, uh, with the base of the, the plane. I mean, that sort of adjustment is, is, is once in a blue moon, really. It's not often you have to sort of fiddle around with that once you've got it right. The same with this screw here as well. So now I'm going to drop that back in again, make sure it's sitting down onto the adjustment and mechanism, drop the lever cap in, push the lever down, and we're about ready to start thinking about getting the actual sort of position of the blade adjusted fully so we can get those lovely shavings I talked about earlier. Mm. Back together again. Now we need to sort, sort out uh, getting the blade adjusted so we're getting the perfect shaving or as near perfect as we can. Uh, now for doing this it's not really a sort of thing that I can film all on my own so I've uh, unfortunately I've got my daughter Heather here who's helping with the camera work. Say hello Heather. Hello. Um, she used to do this camera work on my really early videos which is why they were a lot better than my later videos. Anyway, the last thing you need to do is to just sort of eye it just to see whether you, you've got the um, blade in the right position. What you're looking for is it to be protruding a hair's breadth or a nap's nadger perhaps or even a smidgen above the surface of the sole. So you want to eye down so your eye is in line with the sole of the plane and you're eyeing down and it wants to be a uniform amount all the way across not sticking out more on one side than it is on the other. So at the moment it's not sticking out at all so I'm going to turn the wheel anti-clockwise and that will make it protrude further or perhaps it's sticking out a bit too far now, so I'm going to go back the other way. So I'm going to turn it clockwise. And then also, it's also protruding a little bit too much on the, right, on the left hand side here. So if I move the blade, move this lateral adjustment lever here across to the left, to the side that's sticking out too much, it will tilt the blade over so it will even it up. It's a bit too much on the right now, so I'm just going to come back over a little bit. And we're talking very, very small adjustments here until I've got an even protrusion all the way across. Now, I can also double check if I, I can feel with my thumb like that. I can run my thumb over like that. I won't cut myself if, if, as long as I don't go that way. I can run my thumb over there and I can feel whether there's an even protrusion either side. And that, that when I'm happy with that I can then go on and do a test cut to get it to the final perfect shaving. Uh, just to avoid any confusion I want to talk a bit about this clockwise and anti-clockwise with the wheel here. When I, held the, when I was holding the, the plane upside down I was to, to get the blade to cut lower I was turning anti-clockwise but now when I do adjustment later on when we're talking about adjusting it's going to be the other way around because it's reversed so now I'm going to be turning the wheel clockwise to get a deeper cut. I was just saying that just to avoid any confusion. So now I'm starting to do a test cut on this piece of maple. And at the moment it's, cut, it's cut nice, set nice and fine, possibly a little bit too fine. And it's cutting a little bit on the, I'm going to sort of get it to get a slightly thicker shaving. So you can see what I mean. It's actually it's cutting fairly even actually. It's possibly cutting slightly more on this side. See this? It's tapering out to nothing on that side. So I need to very, very, it's the very slightest tweak. These adjustments can be very, very fine. So it's thick on this side. So I'm moving the lever over to the side it's thick on. And then we'll take another cut and see what we've got. That's better. That's looking pretty much even now. 
We're looking for an even shaving when it's coming out of the middle of the blade. Uh, that's quite important, which that's something I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but that is looking fairly even. Again, possibly very slightly feathering out on the on the right there. So I'm going to move the lever slightly, just in that snadder across to the to the left. And let's just do another cut. That's looking pretty good now. You can see that. Right, so that's fairly good. We could go slightly finer possibly. So I'll turn the wheel anti-clockwise. I'm just taking up the slack there. Now it's starting to bite. And I back it off a bit. On these wheels there's always quite a lot of backlash. You can see there's all that loose backlash before it actually starts biting. So you need to take out that backlash before you're actually doing the adjustment. So let's just see what we've got now. Still a little bit thick, we can go slightly thinner perhaps. Oh, it's too thin now. Oh no, perhaps it's okay. So that thinner shave is now showing that I'm a little bit thick on the other side now. Can you see it's going down quite thin there? I'm just going to tweak it. Whoops, that's too far. Let's try that. Right. <laughs> now it's gone to nothing. So I'm just going to turn the wheel clockwise just to take the blade down a little bit further. No, nope, a bit more. No, nope. a little bit more. I don't know what's happened here, it's gone completely. That's more like it. <laughs> now we've gone over to the other side, it's getting difficult to adjust this. Can you see it's thick on this side now? So I'm just going to take it back again very slightly. Still too thick on the right, on the left, so push the lever to the left. Still a little bit thick on the left. Let's see what we've got there. We're back where we started really. And I messed it up by backing the blade off a bit. So I'm just going to see if I can do back the blade off without messing it up this time. That's a bit more like it. on there. You can see we've got an even shaving when it's coming out of the middle of the blade. Something that can help to get a better, better cut is a little bit of wax on the sole of the plane. That's enough. Just one scribble down the sole of the plane and that usually makes the plane slide a lot more easily. So we get that nice even shaving out the middle. The reason I'm going on about the middle is because we can use the plane to, if we're quite often using the plane for squaring up an edge. And if you remember, if you watch my, um, if you watch my sharpening videos, you remember we put a slight camber on the blade. If you want to find out about putting the camber on, if you take a quick look at my sharpening video. But that camber allows us to use the plane for squaring up. So if you watch what I'm doing now, can you see that I'm moving the plane over so it's overhanging on this side and the camber means that now we're taking the shaving off on the on the right because the plane is overhanging on the right yeah and if I then move the plane over to the other side now we're overhanging on this side you see we're getting the shaving coming off on this side okay so it means we can sort of be quite nuanced about where we're taking the shaving assuming we've got that even shaving coming out the middle. If I do another shaving now, we should get an even one coming out of the middle. There we go. So we can do that down the middle to get an even shaving. And then we can move over to one side. Take the shaving on one side. And then move over to the other side, take the shaving on the other side. And that's why when I'm holding the plane, I don't actually hold the plane by the knob, I hold it by the, 
with my, with my thumb in the middle in front of the knob and I'm using my index finger and my other fingers to act as a fence to move the, move the plane from one side to the other. So I might have a situation where I want the plane a bit off on this side and a bit off on this side. So what I could do is start off over here and then move the plane over. So, I'm, so if you watch, I start with the plane over here, I'm taking the shaving off here and then as I move the plane over to the other side, I'm taking the shaving off on the other side. So it means the plane's quite a sort of a clever, quite a nuanced at all. Right, it might be a good idea at this point just to talk a little bit about planing technique, technique actually. Um, I find that planing is a lot about momentum, so I try to use my body to, to drive the plane. So I keep my elbow hooked and crooked into my hip and I'm just driving the plane forward by rocking my body back and forwards to see what's going on there. I'm just extending the arms to the end of the cut. And I usually pull away the shoulder at the end of the cut. The reason for that is because I want to be always be looking. If Heather would like to come in a bit closer, I always want to be looking at what's coming out of the shave out of the out of the off the blade. So I'm always got my eye on the shaving. Yeah. So I usually take the old shaving out so I can see what's going on all the time. All the time. Where's the shaving cutting? Is it on one side or the other? Or is it sort of cutting an angled shaving? You want to be watching all the time. Because if you don't, you find then you end up with a sort of a, it not being square or whatever. Uh, it's sort of monitoring the progress of the plane all the time by watching the shaving coming out, out of, off the blade. Driving the plane forward with your body by rocking back and forward and just extending your arm to that last little bit if it's a long board. Obviously, if you've got a very long board to the plane, you're going to have to sort of shuffle forward to, uh, to get the whole thing. Uh, perhaps these uh, few tips will help you to get the, uh, get the perfect shaving. Uh, if you haven't seen my sharpening video, it might be worth having a quick look at that to see about how you get that sort of camber on, on the blade. I, do, I think I do have a couple of other um, videos about uh, planing as well because planing is one of my favourite things so I tend to make videos about it. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there are some, I'll put some links to those videos at the end here and there's also somewhere where you can uh, subscribe to the, the channel if you want to find out about new videos coming up and that sort of thing. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Heather. Hi. Unfortunately, a lot of people have trouble getting the plane set to that sort of that sweet spot where you can get the beautiful shavings coming off. Um. Hi. Uh, there's nothing quite like using a. Hi. I think there's nothing. Hi. I think there's nothing quite like. Uh, using a really sharp, well-set plane. Hi. I think there's nothing quite like using a really sharp, well-set plane. It's really... <coughs> oh, fucking hell. <coughs> Hi, I think there's nothing quite like using a really sharp, well-set plane. It really is one of the, the best things in woodwork. I